to work uh, with the community. Um, I know Danielle for a long time, and it's a community that has always fascinated me. I've enjoyed it. I think it has a unique personality. And truthfully, in many ways, I have learned as much or more from Mexican Jewry as from uh, American Jewry. So it's just nice to be back um, with all of you again. Maybe one or two of you were even um, in first or second grade there in Tarbul. It's also uh, nice to be here because as I was jokingly, but very seriously saying, Mauricio is a remarkable person. And Mikol tell me that he's uh As much as he may think, ah, I've taught him, I've learned from him. Um, I want to share an educational vision which is mine. It has come together over many years. Um, I'm going to try and do it briefly. Um, there will be 12 points. Why 12? Because um, the tribes of Israel. If it were 11, it might have been Kochvaya. If it had been 13, it would be something else. But today it's 12. Sometimes it's eight. Sometimes it's seven. One thing I want to probably promise you it never comes out the numbers the way it is. So I'm famous for saying there will be X number of points and we may never get there, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to say them uh, briefly and then uh, we'll talk. I have to start with one other prelude. It will be the first point. Uh, education is the great passion of my life. Education is the great love of my life. You know all the other loves I have, and I like all of you, family. Israel is a very profound love of my life, as are the Jewish people. But education for me is holy. It's a zchut, it's been a privilege to be in education. And there really is nothing else uh, I ever wanted to be from a very young age. So that's a personal Note that you have to know behind everything I say, that's what's called the hidden text or it's a credo of mine. Now I will go through 12 points. Education, I believe, is one of the and maybe the most central institution in the life of a community or a society. Moreover, my own belief is that uh, throughout the history of the Jewish people, Education has been one of the most central and perhaps the most central preoccupation. So we're talking about a subject that to me is no less important than medicine, bridge building, law, all of the other very significant, significant professions. And again, in the first point I am claiming that we are fortunate that ours is a culture and a tradition which has put education on a pedestal. This doesn't always mean it's treated its teachers right, but it's put them on a pedestal. Two, the focus, or let me say it more exactly, the subject of Jewish education is the learner and the person. The subject is not Judaism, but it's about affecting the growth, the development, the life, and the search for meaning of people. There can only be one subject in education, and that is the child. The child is the totality of what we should be focused on, with a few other things I'll mention, and our eyes, heads, hearts have to be on the child and not on a book or a list of courses that are prescribed. Three, the ultimate goal of all education, general education, any education, but certainly Jewish education, in my opinion, is what's called character education. Namely, to affect and shape the attitudes, beliefs, lifestyle, and the decency of being human. I believe all education is framed by, shaped by, and aimed at the larger goal of making us human beings. And in this context, I have to add, we have to learn how to be human beings. It doesn't just happen. And I believe that education, 
the conscious activity of education is focused on this. Four, being human is very much dependent on being part of a group. When I think about Jewish education, I ask previous questions. What's education about? So for example, my own belief is uh, Jewish education must be good education. And then the question is, what is good education? This is still point four. I think ultimately being human is related to being part of groups. And it is through groups that we are able to survive, find meaning, live, the family, the mishpacha. One of the things that always affected me deeply about Mexican Jewry was a feeling of it was a kihila or a mishpacha. By the way, um, and this, the, the technical or sociological word for this is tribe. The word mishpacha in the, the Tanakh really means a tribe. And the point is human beings live, flourish by being part of tribes which have shared values, customs, practices, dependence on each other. And in many ways, they are the keys to helping us being human beings. Five, Judaism, which has many names, it's either Judaism. That, by the way, is one of its latter names. It's either Judaism. In English, it's now um, frequently called Jewish civilization. Sometimes it's called Jewishness. However you look at it, it has a very long history, which has changed throughout the years and the millennia. The history of the Jewish people is rooted in biblical texts. I believe the primary text is the book of Exodus. I don't think as much as the chapters in Genesis 30, 31, where they talk about Abraham, and the promise of the land, that's an individual. But the story of the Jewish people as a nation begins when Am Yisrael goes out of Egypt, and it went through many metamorphoses in life. It's an age old culture, religion, and civilization that gives meaning to life. It's not something we do because who's gonna say Kaddish for us afterwards? I don't think that's the purpose of Jewish education. I think it's who am I gonna get through Corona? Who am I gonna get through the joys of life? With whom will I learn how to find meaning in life now? And therefore, this is still all point five. For me, survivalism, the act in itself of simply surviving is not the essence of Jewish education. It's survivalism for what? And that what to me seems to be a life of meaning, of value, of joy, of truth, and the like. Six, the content of Jewish education, I told you already what the subject is. The subject is the learner. The content encloses or encompasses a huge treasure chest, a um, veritable, um, indescribable collection of customs, values, texts, and practices that Jewish people have created throughout the ages and that have uh, persisted. To be a Jew, therefore, I think, means to, be, to have some contact and be, to be nourished in some way by these grand and great creations. Yes, it also is some fabulous foods. I will not go into food, Jewish foods now because I know we have Ashkenazim and Svardim, and we have uh, in front of me, I know we have all the different Eidot and we all have many diverse, wonderful foods and they're important. But there are other things that have been no less important and that are about how we should live our lives. So the content of any school, it seems to me, is not miktsoot, it's not subjects. It's not like many public schools do. Public schools say, we have five subjects you have to learn and you learn from nine to 10 and 10 to 11 and they break up knowledge or what you have to know into different things. And all of it is only 
so you can get into college anyway. That's increasingly the purpose of general education. To me, the content of Jewish education is a collection. It's a rainbow of topics that together constitute this thing called Jewish civilization. So Hebrew, history, Tanakh, uh, Dinim, customs and ceremonies, text, these all come together like a grand symphony. These are not separate solo topics that we learn in school. And the more that these various topics play together like a beautiful symphony or like a, a beautiful meal that's put out in an aesthetic way, it seems to me that is what is the content. Seven, seems to me that I already said the goal of Jewish education, like I believe the goal of all education is character education. In the end, I believe it's about making us human beings, having character, being able to live life the fullest, being able to deal with its joys and its sorrows. I believe Jewish education has an additional component, which is about enabling young people and people of all ages. For me, by the way, Jewish education is not uh, defined by the word peda. Pedago pedagogia or uh, pedagogy is really an incorrect term. That implies that everything is about the child. In fact, in uh, the last decades of the 20th century, there was a new approach developed in adult education, which called it andragogy. Andragogy refers to uh, older ages. So when I use the word education, it's cradle to grave. In any case, the goal is about enabling young people and middle-aged people and uh, more advanced, but still vibrant people to experience, enjoy, and be enriched by Jewish civilization. Again, and I wanna say it strongly because I want you, if you want to disagree with me, I believe the survival of the Jewish people is very important, but I don't think survival per se is what Jewish education is about. It's not so in another 200 years, the Jewish people will continue to exist. It's so today, when we're going through what the world is going through, we are able to deal with complexities and joys and loves and disappointments. It's about enriching our lives as human beings. Eight, I think one of the most effective ways of doing Jewish education is to try and run away from the example of the best private schools in Mexico, whether it's the American school or in uh, North America, it's all the good private schools or certainly the public schools, where they are interested again in teaching separate subjects. And again, in North America, it's very clear today. Jewish people want to send their children to a good preschool so they'll get into a good elementary school. And they want them to go to a good elementary school so they'll get in a good high school. And good high schools have only one purpose, to prepare you for college. And that is destroying what education is about. It seems to me that the real way to look at education is about the creation of a culture. Schools should be cultures. The minute somebody walks into a room, they should be feeling Jewish oxygen. They should be engulfed with a community. This means the person who's at the front desk. This means the way teachers talk to each other. This means the way teachers talk to students and students talk to teacher. In many ways, the best way to teach certain things is by actual experience. Uh, this complicated thing called teaching Hebrew. Ultimately, the best way is probably to spend six months uh, in Israel. Studies have shown people who spend six months in Israel or a year one year of their lives, they probably um, succeed sometimes better than people who spent 12 years in American schools. I know it's better in Mexico. So this is one example of culture. In other words, this eighth point says that all of Jewish life should be the deportivo. Don't misunderstand me. I haven't come here now to all of a sudden say give money to the deportivo, but what hit me then, and I'm told it's somewhat still the same today, 
and I know it's true of some certain synagogues too, they're total communities. They have to do with the mind and the body and feeling. I'm having trouble hearing you. Who said that? Somebody? Oh, I'm sorry. Probably okay. your phone. My phone. <laughs> I thought I turned it off. I'll throw it away. These phones are destroying life too. So um, it's interesting now for me because I see boxes in front of me. I see a lot of boxes. On the other hand, I see boxes and I see homes in back of them. In teaching, I've mentioned this to Mauricio, um, I, before this, hardly ever taught online. I, I didn't believe in it. I was, a, if you want, a disciple of Martin Buber's approach to life, I thou. An interesting thing has happened. In teaching now, I can see all of you face to face, and that doesn't always happen when I teach in a classroom, because in a classroom, I can't be looking all around. Some of you may even be looking and trying to figure out what's in back of me. You see books, and if it were closer and a bigger screen, you'd see all my dolls. I have a collection of my heroes, Martin Luther King, Freud, Herzl, Agnon, Amichai, and I have all. So I see part of your homes. To me, you're real human beings. The eighth point then is, the more that we can create, as it were, a kind of culture in schools and maybe even do away with the school, the, the, the word um, school, maybe that would be better. Nine, I can't talk about Jewish education without talking about the contemporary state of Israel. Schuti uh, was my great privilege to have been born before there was a state and to be born in the time in which the state of Israel was created. And for that, I'll ever be grateful. It's a very complicated thing I know, and I know there's a sikhsuch, and I know there's elections again coming in March, and I know um, new parties, and I know all the stuff, and I watch all the news as you do. But both having lived in Israel all my life, um, for a good part of my life, and not, I believe it is one of the great, unique phenomena, miracles, I don't think it's a miracle from outer space, by the way. I think it's the greatness is that human beings were behind it. I think its richness and the fact that it exists is an indispensable part of the Jewish people. And it should be presented not just for Jews. I think it's an example of how human beings can change history. I know all the complications. There are those who say we changed history al Gabe on the backs of other people living there. All of these are a part of life's complications. Life's complicated. But I do want to say that I think Israel is related to Jewish existence in a diversity of ways and in multiple ways that have changed over history. Our relationship to Israel today is not what the same as that contained in the story of Abraham. It's not the same as that in the story of Exodus. It's not the story the same as the story of a of Jerusalem being a cultic ritual center of Jewish life. And it's certainly not the story of um, world Jewry throughout the ages once it was outside Israel. And for the record, just in case anybody really wants to, you know, have fun with me, I don't think the contemporary state of Israel is a reflection of the Jews throughout history wanting to go back to Israel. In fact, I believe the Jews created other ways of dealing with Israel. They spiritualized it. They linked it to the Messiah. In fact, they didn't go back. And it wasn't because they couldn't go back. And um, the story of Israel today is a story of contemporary Jews who chose for various reasons. So uh, not only can I conceive of a Jewish education without Israel, I think it's a very prominent thing. 10, 10, 11, and 12. And then you're going to get to talk to me. 10. The Jewish educator, the teacher, the informal educator, in my mind, is the most important figure in Jewish life. Certainly I throw in the rabbis and certainly Daniel and the college and programs like that. Educators, in my opinion, and I say this from the heart, this is not stam, I'm not playing games. I believe they are the most important figures in Jewish life. I think I should probably change it. They should be regarded and treated 
as the most important figures in Jewish life. To be a Jewish educator is more than simply being a knowledgeable and committed Jew. It includes the ability to care for human beings. It includes the ability to relate to human beings. It's not enough to know, I believe, today. One has to know how to relate to human beings. And I think one has to be concerned for the growth of human beings. The greatness of being an educator is you're dealing with, I think, the most important thing, the most exciting thing there is in life, working with people and working with a quite fascinating civilization. Obviously, the frustration of education is uh, you don't usually see the finished product. We are parts of a chain. But to be part of that chain, and we do get rewarded. And those of you who teach now or work now, and I've certainly found it in my life, over the years we are rewarded. And uh, sometimes, schar mitzvah mitzvah, sometimes the reward of doing something is doing itself. For me, the reward of today, I don't know what this will be like. I have no idea what it's like sitting where you are now and hearing this guy in Chicago talking. And you may think he's on the moon, but the attempt and the, and the trying and caring about it is a kind of reward. 11. In contemporary life, and I think this has been the case for a good part of Jewish history, Jewish education is very much dependent on committed and concerned lay leaders, balabatim, who care about, support it, and do whatever is possible to make it grow. My memories of those years with Tarbut was a remarkable, remarkable group of, um, of lay leaders. I forgot the name that's used for like the education committee or something. Patronato. Patronato. Oh, I love that word, patronato. Uh, yeah. For some people, it's like they shake and all that. And, patrons. To me, it's a beautiful word. And I really think people who have businesses and families and lives, and they devote their time and their money and their care are very, very important. But I believe it is the Jewish professional, the educator, and the teachers who ultimately are the ones who understand, translate, and shape the emergence of Jewish education. And I believe they should shape the practice of Jewish education. This has been an age-old um, dynamic in Jewish life, not just in Jewish life. Um, who owns and who controls Jewish education? And again, Mexico City was for me very fascinating because of that, uh, beautiful, I'm gonna use the word for the whole rest of the day, the patronato. And I met fabulous people, but I believe that the boxes I see on the screen, you are the ones who I believe should be setting what matters, what's taught, how it's taught, and the like. This can be complicated because there is this phrase also, bala mea, bala dea, that who has the mea, 100 billion or whatever, they're the ones who have the decision. I don't see it that way. Um, I see that there's if you want, I'll make it easier. I believe there's a higher authority and we work for the higher authority. When people ask me who I work for, uh, you know, I'm connected with the I Center for Israel Education. I'm connected with George Washington University. I was connected for a lot of years with the Hebrew University, but that's no, not who I work for. My last point. Last point, you probably may have felt throughout, but I wanna make it stronger. Being Jewish is part of a larger context, which is being human. The conflicts of life have changed dramatically. I have spent the last year reading books about evolution, cultural evolution, the changes in society, biology, what's called neuroeducation, our whole notion of how we know and teach and like is changing dramatically. So I believe that being Jewish is part of the larger mission, task, and joy of being human. And that challenge of being human 
is not about the conflict between Jews and other Jews or Jews between themselves. The real conflict that faces us as Jews and as human beings today is not Palestinians, it's not non-Jews, it's poverty, it's disease, it's climate change, it's healthcare, it's war. The world has evolved and the world has changed. And what used to be the enemies are no longer the enemies. The enemies today are clear. Corona does not recognize, and it didn't recognize the 67 borders or even the borders today between uh, Israel and between what some people call occupied, liberated, whatever you want. Corona didn't stop there. It's like great music. Great music doesn't stop on the border between uh, Mexico and uh, the United States or the United States and Canada. So I believe we actually are in the process of a dramatic change in which the focus will be less and less on conflict with others. I know you may say I'm a simple dreamer, but the point is this. Life is about survival, because that's the nature of um, biology. It's about surviving, and we stay where we are, and we live because we survive well. And um, the challenge is we survive, ultimately, will be less and less other nations. Uh, those who deal with this, for example, emphasize the fact, and I want to get into good or bad, there has not been a major war in 75 years. There has never been a time in history when health and sanitation is better than it is now. So look at what's going on in these days. Our attention is not focused on simply our internal dilemmas. It's focused on bigger stuff. And the real enemy is for the survival of the Jews is not simply that we stick together, but I don't think we'll survive as Jews unless we meet our mission as Jews. And also, unless we are committed to fighting the really true enemies of human existence. Tam seder Pesach ki I have finished my 12 principles.